Hey, thanks so much for clicking on this video and welcome to the haves and the have nots review here on YouTube. If you're a fan of Tyler Perry, you've come to the right place. Be sure to click that subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any new content on the channel. And also check me out on these social media platforms and links in the description below will lead you to my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook group, and Facebook page. Once again, thanks for joining in and enjoy the video. You, you know, have and have not fans, I have to say that um, for the most part, thank you so much for um, really blowing those videos up. The two videos I've done recently about Derek is Candace's father and one video, one video I'm really proud of the one I did yesterday. The one about is did or oh, what was it? Did Derek face the same demons that Candace is dealing with now? Currently, I think it's over a couple thousand views. Um, a lot of comments and everybody's liked it so far. No dislikes. I mean, not that I let dislikes bother me anyway, but I'm just like very, very happy that video has been doing consistently well, at least at the time of this recording. Even the video about Derek is Candace's father. Lots of comments, which is amazing. But in this video, and one thing I will say, what was it? One video was 30 minutes. The other one was 18. So that's almost an hour's worth of talking about Candace. And that's really gotten me to think more about the character and uh, her and Hannah alike because I talk about both of them a lot in those videos. And I was thinking about the fact that, you know, well, I, I even did, did a video on this a while ago about those two being just stubborn and whatnot and refusing to accept help and things of that nature. But I, I will say this much. I guess the main question I want to ask to you all is, will these characters ever... Well, I guess you could say let go. And what I mean by let go is just to finally allow somebody to hold them, to allow them to break down. You know, that feeling where you just feel so broken, but you've been determined to hold yourself together as long as possible. But you finally reach that last step where you can't take anymore. But then that person, whether it be a romantic love interest, a good friend, a family member is there to just hold you, not even hug you because you don't even have the strength to lift your arms up and you know wrap around their back it's like they're you're literally being held together like you finally let the dams break the tears like just stream out of your eyes and you're crying like a baby but by the end of it you feel better because for the first time in possibly your life or the first time in years or a decade you finally let somebody else help you shoulder the load of your life. Now, this video, I don't plan on it being terribly long, but I just thought about it after doing that video um, yesterday about the demons, about Derek and Candace. And I mentioned that one scene from the episode in Crisis, I believe that was the episode where, you know, Hannah talked about the situation where one of her um, male interests in the past turned out to have molested Candace and at the end you know she asked Candace to forgive her says I love you and hugs her and Candace is looking and she's about to break down but she gently pushes Hannah away saying you need to go and then she ends up leaving and then she cries even further and um, then we flash forward to season five after of course Hannah talks about the truth about the man that raped her aka Candace's father and she is, well, I believe crying in that episode, too. It's like, well, that was a good story, Hannah. It's like you made it up. And then as soon as she kicks him out, well, she doesn't even really kick him out. I think that's when Hannah takes off her shoes, gets the dust off him, I think, as a reference to the Bible, then leaves. But then Candace breaks down even further. I think the only time, if I'm not mistaken, that Candace has allowed herself to break down and be held was by Oscar in season three. And... Yeah, that was that was quite the episode. But with Hannah, I think more recently, the example is when Derek asked to shoulder the load with her. Once again, referencing uh, a scene I talked about in the last video where um, Derek is crying. And then, you know, Hannah talks about when she got raped and Derek just felt for her so much. And then on top of that, you know, the situation of Candace just won't stop being Candace. And that's when Derek talks about helping her to shoulder the load. And then they embrace. And of course, Derek is crying harder than Hannah. But 
it is nice seeing Hannah finally allowing herself to open up. Not too quickly now. I mean, obviously by holding out on sex, but it is nice to finally see her with somebody that can help her along the way. And that does bring about suspicion because like I said before, Oscar, well, I always knew he was working with David, but for the first time we were seeing the true side of Candace, the vulnerable side, the sweet side. But that makes me suspicious of Derek because we don't really know his full story yet. Then with Candace, even though, and you know for a fact, I'm not a huge fan of the whole Charles subplot. But now that I think about it, it could turn her out to be good in the long run. But it is possible that maybe Charles will be that guy that Candace allows herself to finally, well, be vulnerable around. But I'm still a bit worried about the whole power thing because she doesn't like being controlled and told what to do. But, you know, I thought about it. Charles does have a son and a daughter, if I'm not mistaken, two young kids. Remember when they were first introduced? It was like that episode because Charles and Candace ended up having conjoined rooms. And then all of a sudden, the children of a presidential candidate opened the door to a stranger's hotel room. And it's kind of like that seemed very suspicious to me. But, I mean, when you think about it, that could be an opportunity for her to be a mother again. So, there's that aspect of it. And basically be a mother to them that she wasn't to Quincy Jr. So, there's that aspect of it. And another comparison between Charles and Oscar. Charles, just like Oscar, was said to be married but then lost their wife. But remember, Oscar's profile on that website, he showed Landon to show Candace was fake. So there's that aspect of it. But in any case, it would be very cool to see Candace allow somebody in her life. Remember after Charles and Landon was there too, delivered the news about Quincy Jr., Candace kicked him out because, you know, being Candace, she broke down by herself. So really, I'm just saying that even though, and once again, I'm not a major fan of Candace being first lady but based off the plot it does seem like the show is going in that direction it would be a great chance for Candace with Charles and Hannah with Derek to be vulnerable they don't have to be as stubborn and bullheaded and that's one thing I do like about the characters because they're so much alike even though they would hate to admit it if they allow themselves to be vulnerable, then maybe they'll be able to move past their grieving stages and move forward with their lives. And one thing I will admit about Tyler Perry with these shows is um, is not so much a Disney movie where, you know, a Disney princess is, you know, oh, I need to be saved. And then a man swoops in to save them. It's not just that. I mean, if anything, Candace and Hannah are just strong, independent, but stubborn black women. So even if a man comes in to finally rescue them, I don't feel like it's a cop out because we've seen the journeys of these two women. True, very different, but they've both experienced a lot of the same things, but at different points in their lives. And it does seem like a breath of fresh air when they finally break down and cry because it's like they've been holding on to this pain for so long. There's regardless of whatever situation they're going through. So to see them finally release is actually a good feeling. And I, and I said it before, like Tinka Sumner is one of the, wow. I mean, I don't know if I've seen too many women on camera cry. I thought, wow, it's actually attractive when they're crying, not simply because, oh, well, Jeremy likes to see women crying in pain. That's not really it for me personally. It's very attractive because, and very refreshing for me to see because of the fact that it takes a lot to make Candace cry and to actually see her cry is refreshing because of the fact that about 90% of the time she has like resting bitch face because she's well a cold hearted bitch to people. So to actually see her cry and release emotions that we rarely get to see is actually pretty good, at least in my opinion. But with Hannah, I mean, I mean, shoot. The praying Christian, as Veronica says, but to have her actually cry in terms of not just because something dramatic happened, but because she feels secure, I can actually respect that, you know, like basically breaking down with Derek there. But even in the midst of her drama and what was going on in her life, she was able to comfort Derek as much as he was trying to comfort her. 
But that's my situation with that. I guess I don't even know what to title this video. Um, will Candace and Hannah ever stop being stubborn or... I'll figure it out later. But thanks so much for tuning in. I hope everybody enjoys tonight's episode of the Haves and the Have Nots. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll talk to you soon.